They've also developed protocol with the FEM board and the Western Government Committees, continuing education for both internal and external integration of FEMC's corporate social responsibility, being able to help the industry. Rules change committee priority areas. Uh, this is the one I'm, I will cut this off in November 15. Uh, so, but this is the one I'm currently chairing. Number one, we need to review and revise the self-regulatory arrangements, not heavily, but with a view so that it is a non non-confrontational process. It's been very difficult over the last few years. It's not, it was never intended to be. It is really something that has to be part and parcel normal, or normal order of business. And that the independence of that process is uh, respected and clear structurally. Second, we have to streamline the investigative processes to minimize the opportunities for investment. Intervention, if any, exists. Again, it should help that uh, on the personal level. Next, empowerment of the independent directors to deal with self-regulatory processes. One of the most difficult things is really to be able to say, okay, we have independent directors who are actually um, involved in the appointment of committee members, et cetera, et cetera. Rule support for the PEMC restructuring. PEMC, uh, after November 15, becomes in some ways a tabula rasa, a, a blank slate that you can fill in. Their, their key positions are there, and yet at the same time, it's now open for growth. Something previously, as both market operator and, and self-governance, it was very difficult to do. And of course, an election of a new chairman for rules change. I cannot begin to, uh, to emphasize how important it is that the rules change process really remains at the sun. And uh, it'll, be a, it'll be an interesting few months to get these all through. I'm asking for your support. It is not for me, it is really for the market. Other priority developments, ancillary market which can happen any time. Uh, we are waiting for the ERC approvals, although everything has been filed on that. Why is this important? One, um, there have been complaints about making money on oil as an ancillary service. So that should take that away. It should help a little bit with the capacity gaps, or, or significantly as well. There are various things that will affect it, but very importantly, it gives value now to peaking and ancillary sorts of, uh, sorry, to ancillary and backup sorts of services. The besides market. Um, we are still pending the technical infrastructure, although we look on track for January. The market operator can, uh, can uh, do that, but we have to discuss with the DOE as to when they would like to start it. Our understanding is, and uh, we, we do have representation, uh, Jen Fredbiliana from, from the Visayas, um, through there, that the Visayas cooperatives and distribution utilities are looking forward to it, uh, in a sense, so that they can get out of this cycle that they're in, where, where there seems to be insufficiency of power there. A forwards market, it's really for the gap between bilateral contracts and spot trading. It allows you to be flexible. We're, we're intending to put that through, it's voluntary, uh, bulletin board initially, just so we know, and then tradability. And also the ERC has assigned us to be the B2B retail, uh, sorry, not B2B retail, business to business provider uh, for the electricity retail. In other words, if you want to switch, you have to do that. Now, in my mind, it is one step away from wholesale spot market. <laughs> It is a different sort of business entirely. So it's something that the board has to discuss whether it will be internal or will just be split off uh, eventually. Now, uh, corporate development areas. First membership meeting. Uh, attorneys in Karnashon will be briefing you right after this about this. Momentous time. Uh, I'm the last vestige here, I think, of, of government and, um, involvement in, in the market uh, as I was appointed through there, but um, also the board. The board is an interim basis. It is direct appointment by the uh, Department of Energy. But really, the board takes on a different flavor when it becomes self-regulatory, when ultimately the responsibility will belong among the collegial group, collegial body. And the level of, of responsibility, uh, it's enormous. However, because of that, we encourage you, of course, to think about this, to participate if you can, one of the things that I do sincerely believe is that as long as the stakeholders can choose their representatives, this market will prosper and will flourish. Uh, as part of that, obviously, there's approval of the plan for transition to independent market operator. The market operator becomes a contracted entity and an entity that can be investigated. So it's a, uh, well, they can actually be investigated now, but it's, uh, it becomes really a contractual arrangement. So you can be assured of the best independent technical service you can find. And that is the target, or should be the target, for the market operator. And finally, the restructuring of the Filipino Electricity Market Corporation. Um, 
very difficult thought process as you know, built. Four years ago, it was built up from scratch. And now, it's a deconstruction of pension. So it can, but again, we believe that it is the only way that it can go forward by being able to make these decisions through them. FEMC, once the IMO is in place, will now be an institution focused on self-regulation and market governance. And again, I think that's one of the things that we have to realize, that FEMC, and uh, I know a lot of people have worked on FEMC from the site, on Wesson from the site, thousands of people when you, when you start doing that. It is a creation of the industry, and such, as such, I'd like to see it as an industry institution. And as long as that institution survives, and, and it has its integrity, then the industry will be all right. The near future, privatization and IPP administration, absolutely critical. Uh, market needs competition. The electricity industry needs competition. Sorry, it's not very clear. Uh, we need to dispose and fishing generation assets that's already in the work. Supplier guidelines for Western participation. Forwards and futures markets. Bilateral contract standardization, again, very important. So that people know what they're buying um, and how they're buying, they can compare it. Treatment of stranded costs and universal levy. Uh, again, this should be the final pilot. Self-governance and regulation, ERC. Uh, we're trying for an investi investigation protocol between the Energy uh, Regulatory Commission and the Market Surveillance Committee. Definition of market power abuse. Very, one of the issues about running a market in a country like the Philippines is that we don't have a very long record of antitrust regulations uh, and uh, competition regulations. And all the more, it's important that we, as a market, are willing to self-regulate. Next, uh, transparency and bilateral supply. This will come. Uh, generation price benchmarking. Uh, eventually, that uh, well, even through a, through a generation index, these can already be tracked. And price mitigation measures. Um, these are always going to be of contention. I have always been of the view that we do not need caps, and the caps can be detrimental to the long-term development of the industry. Uh, at the time, I fought for a 62,000 cap rather than a lower cap than that. And despite everything, despite everything, I still believe that caps are not necessarily even a competitive environment. Let's hope. Um, and see, I do not want to look at this market as a static market. That now there, it's this. We have to look at this market that eventually there will be competition. And we should not put ourselves into things that we cannot back out of. We cannot rely on caps. What we must rely on is good competition. Um, enforcement and compliance. List of anti-competitive behaviors, um, not exhaustive, it will always grow. You can never all, always encompass it. Refine surveillance and enforcement procedures. Schedule of fines and penalties, that was what I mentioned. All of these are in the work. Precise market, reserve market, retail electricity markets I discussed earlier. Market design improvements, gross pool versus net pool scheduling. This is a debate. Um, we have to discuss this, finish it. Uh, there seems to be a lot of attractive advantages to a net pool. But again, we need the industry involved in this. The uh, locational versus system marginal pricing. Um, one of the issues we have is information. Nodal prices are nodal prices, and they don't reflect an average to the consumer. So there is that disjunct between wholesale information and retail information. Then we have the day ahead and real-time dispatch combined. We need the self versus centralized unit commitment, single versus three-part building structures. All of these are enhancements which will make it easier for you as part of this month's debate. And of course, the independent market operator. First, uh, it has to be started with the FEM board and selection of the IMO by industry stakeholders. And the separation of MO from pension. Our website, one of the things that we've done all right on, we haven't been very good on with problems sometimes, uh, had problems opening it. Uh, I know you guys have been struggling with this, we're trying to fix it, but, uh, Market, it's, uh, it's being improved right now as we speak. There are a few other initiatives. Consumer education, if any of you are interested in uh, any consumer education initiatives, the board has a, uh, a consumer education committee that can provide financing. So that's open to participants. Um, a few other things there. But essentially, when you see the PEMC uh, next year, or sorry, after November 15th, the decisions that have to be made vis-a-vis -vis the organization are very, very paramount. But at the end of the day, I mean, these are decisions that we need to make together as an industry.